So the, my, my question is, and, and it's probably going to be boring, but um, I just need some clarification on an issue that I've had discussions with uh, theists about, specifically Christians, mm-hmm. and it's the topic of grace. Um, and That's what um, you say before Matt, dinner. Right. Uh, it, 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 it's that plus more, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking. Yeah, fundamentally, uh, fundamentally all, all grace means is this is a, a gift from God. Um, it could be roughly equivalent to, to mercy. It's something that you don't deserve and you couldn't achieve on your own, and yet God will grant you. This is a dispensation. It's like a presidential pardon. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, that presidential pardon issue is, is the one I'm specifically talking about because um, the, the, the conversation that I had with one particular Christian um, was about morality and how, uh, to me, the the morality of Christianity seems a lot like a uh, carrot and stick version of Santa Claus, like a bigger carrot and a bigger stick, obviously, but, but still uh, you, you can't morally justify that kind of system um, where the ultimate result is really all you're living your life for. Yeah. Um, but, but that was kind of pushed aside, and we got into this topic of grace, and I'm not exactly sure how those two issues connect within kind of the framework of Christianity. How does one I'm, get I'm out not of sure. Oh. I'm not sure what they meant. I, I, I'd kind of have to be a party to that conversation. It's much in the same way that when you try to, to discuss anything, anything we've discussed today, yeah. as a matter of fact, free will, mm-hmm. faith, souls, whatever, um, everybody's going to have a different tact. And so you really need to push the person who's raising these things to tell you what they mean. Yeah, and, you, and you're sort of trying to, to determine the mind of God and... Um, if there is a God, nobody could nobody could figure that out. And if there was, if there's not a God, then it's a pointless exercise. So it's like, how do you how do you know that there is such a thing as grace, and how do you know when it's given, and and under what conditions? And it's all just um, make believe, as far as I can tell. And I, I guess my problem with the the whole concept is that it's it's so difficult. Um, coming from a perspective that, that doesn't believe in the stuff, to have even a sensible conversation when the, when the definitions aren't even um, agreed to, and much n- not even agreed to, much less understood by both sides. I mean, your, your previous callers have been great examples of this, where, where Christians say that the, the way they use faith a lot of times is different than the way that atheists say. Um, you want to know what's worse? Uh, uh, attribute to them. You want to know what's sure. worse? Go into yes. any church <laughs> and conduct a poll on what each church member believes grace to mean. Yeah. They, they, well, use, yeah, the, they use the language. It, so it's almost that there's no fundamental significant meaning to much of the language within religion because all they really need is a gist. Oh, these people around me are experiencing the Holy Spirit. What the hell does that mean? How does it manifest? How can I know? Is it, is it goosebumps? Is it, you know, the hair standing up? Is it a feeling of euphoria? Is it all of these things? Is it, is it different for different people? All they know is it's in my best interest to act as if I understand what this means. And I think I get it just well enough for me to, you know, sing praises and be convinced that I'm, I'm one of the chosen ones. And the truth is um, most of them couldn't explain to you fun, wh- why they believe what they believe or a good explanation of the history of their church, the history of the Bible, how we got from A to B, and how doctrines have changed. It's, it's, I go to church, and most of them just think, God's real, Jesus loves me, that's all I really need to know. The rest of it is window dressing. Wouldn't that lead to the conclusion, though, that there's really no point in having any, any discussion? Or, I mean... No, no, because you get to point this out, and there are people who can understand that they're engaged in, in sophistry. But, but to your point, you know, I think that if you are talking about grace, you may have ceded way too much territory. You know, you, maybe you need to, to back up and say, you know, wh- why, why do you think your God is real? Why do you think we should believe in the Bible? You know, uh, you know what about all these atrocities? And, and there... And, <laughs> And was, you know, was Jesus anything more than a, you know, a, a rabbi uh, and, and these sorts of questions? Uh, th- those would be more sort of uh, getting t- toward the ground, right, of the, the, the fundamentals. So I think if you're talking yeah, about I, grace, you've, you've maybe um, 
let the weeds grow too far. <laughs> at, a, at a minimum, you, you can have that discussion about grace, but you've got to have it with them because I can't tell you what they mean by grace. Fair enough. Yep. And well, I, I, based on what you said, Don, I, I think you guys are doing God's work, uh, yeah. <laughs> given that you're, you're having these discussions um, and you're able to, to sometimes penetrate the elasticity of people's beliefs because, I mean, the, every, every turn that I make, there's usually some dead end that we, are, that we reach. Yeah where somebody's able to justify something or, or rationalize something, and it's, it's just so hard making any headway. I, all I can tell you is that uh, it does work. It doesn't work for everybody. People do, in fact, change their minds. Um, you know, like I may never change the mind of somebody I'm actually talking yeah. to, but people watching. Right. But People change their own minds. You know, don't, don't, yeah. go, in, go, in, don't go into it with the idea that you're going to change somebody's mind. Go into the idea that maybe you can learn something, maybe they can learn something. Yeah. And, and the conversations are, are useful because everybody can learn something. You, you can get a better understanding of what he means by grace or, or she means by grace so that you can then, when you ha go on to have a conversation with somebody else, say, hang on a minute, this other Christian had this notion of grace and yours is a little different. How do I tell which one's real? And, you know, those conversations that engage in Socratic method where you're asking the questions that are just obvious or, or seem obvious to us, uh, they're definitely not obvious to them, which is, you know, why Zach and some other honest callers um, say, hang on, that makes sense. I'm going to have to go back and think about it and call you back. Well, and Matt raised an interesting point is that even if somebody can rationalize all their, all their viewpoints, uh, the next guy is going to use those terms in a very different way. And be aware that uh, a lot of these things are so squishy that they can kind of mean whatever they need to mean. <laughs> yep. And on that note, yeah. Frank, I'm going to let you go. We're going to try and get to a few more callers who are on hold before we go to dinner, but I appreciate it. All right. Good luck, guys. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks.